welcome back to my channel. So today I wanted to talk about something that um, a lot of people deal with and this video might be a little bit different than what you're used to seeing from me, but it's also something that is very much a part of my life and I, I do want to connect with you guys and let you guys get to know me a little bit better. So one of the things that I have dealt with for a really, really long time that I'm sure hundreds, millions of people out there deal with is severe anxiety. Um, since about, I'm just going to give you a little bit of a backstory, how my anxiety started and the things that I do to cope with my severe anxiety. And um, my diagnosis is panic disorder and severe anxiety and depersonalization. So a lot of you know what anxiety is where you get, some people get panic attacks, some people just have it so severe that you have it every single day, which that's when it turns into like panic disorder. And that's how I have it. I don't have like severe panic attacks as much anymore, um, but I do have anxiety on an everyday basis. And the way it started for me was back in 2009, um, just a little bit of a backstory, um, how it started. So I never really had anxiety growing up that I remember. I know some things did make me nervous, so maybe it was slight, you know, nervousness. Um, like when I was little, I remember that my, my mother used to tell me that I was like terrified of birds and like any animal, I was absolutely terrified. Um, but growing up, I don't remember having like panic attacks or any issues like that. So in 2009, I was dating a guy and um, I had never smoked weed. <laughs> and um, I made the mistake of smoking. And mind you, this is just my experience. So I don't want people to think that I'm advocating for not smoking because I know that marijuana does help a lot of people. But for myself, this was my experience. So um, it was Christmas night and I had smoked with an ex-boyfriend of mine. And I remember that we were in my van and um, that I had at the time and I had smoked for the very first time. And we were listening to music and all of a sudden I got this huge like adrenaline rush mind you we were listening to like hip-hop music in the car and i started to feel like i was at a rock concert like i was headbanging in the car just like this huge adrenaline rush i i kid you not i don't know if he either laced the weed or if i smoked too much or if i inhaled it too hard i don't know because i wasn't used to smoking i never did so mind you i get out of the car it was like midnight christmas night and as soon as I stepped out of the car, I, I felt immediately different. And I don't know if that's what they call being high, but for me, this was more than just a high. So I get out of the car and um, as I stepped onto the ground, I couldn't feel like, I knew I was stepping onto the ground, but I couldn't feel myself stepping. I kind of felt as if I was floating on a cloud. So I, I'm just like, whoa, what, what the hell is going on, right? So all of a sudden, I start to feel like, even though I know I'm physically there, I don't physically feel myself attached to my body. So I started to feel like I was observing my body as an outsider from up here. So I was there, present, but I was physically observing my body from above. And I could see all of my physical actions, but I did not feel connected physically to myself, if that makes sense. It almost felt as if, I don't know if you guys have ever seen the movie um, Invisible Man with Kevin Bacon. I think that's what it's called, where he's invisible. There's a movie with Kevin Bacon that he's physically, he drink, he does some type of injection that turns him invisible. Physically, that's how I felt. Like I knew I was physically there, but I could not feel my body whatsoever. I felt like I was one with the air. Mind you, to go from not feeling, to from feeling normal to feeling that is absolutely terrifying. That sensation that happened to me that night 
is called depersonalization. And this took years and years and years of research, therapy, psychiatrist, everything and anything you could think of, I've done. So I do have a lot to say about this because, I mean, I'm not a therapist, obviously, or a psychiatrist, but this is my experience and I have dealt with this since 2009. Mind you, I still deal with it till this day and it's 2019. So after I got out of the car and I went into the house, I asked him, I was like, what the fuck did you give me? And he started laughing and he's like, ha ha ha, you're a ghost. And somehow that triggered something in my head where I started shaking like an, I could, I was like this, I was shaking like an epileptic. I was laying in bed, trembling, shaking. I could not stop shaking freaking out and in my head I had like this feeling physically and in my head of impending doom that I was dying that I was dying that I was going to disappear into thin air and just that was it I physically felt like I was dying and I didn't know what was going on I thought it was my blood pressure dropped my sugar dropped I didn't know what it was so I'm over here like pouring literally salt in my palm and eating salt out of my hand thinking that my blood pressure was low mind you that it was just in my head that my blood pressure had dropped and I was dying nobody can convince me otherwise so I was shaking I did not this experience was absolutely traumatizing I had never questioned reality and I had never questioned my if I was real this changed my entire perception of myself and everything I knew about life everything so I got into the shower. He got me into a cold shower and I am, I look and I get out of the shower and one minute I blink and he's right in front of me. The next minute I blink and he's all the way across the living room. The next minute I blink again and he's right in front of me. The next minute I blink and he's across the room. And it was absolutely terrifying because I had no control over it because I didn't know what was happening. So this went on for hours. I walked into the living room. Um, I remember my children were little. Um, and yeah, that's a terrible parenting, <laughs> terrible parenting. I'm not judging anybody, but for me, I felt guilt for years for smoking that night. Um, I know hundreds of people do it, but I had never smoked. I had never done marijuana. I had never done drugs. So to me, it was just like, I felt really guilty. So I remember my kids were asleep and I walked into the room. When I walked in to kiss them goodnight, it was Christmas night. I remember in my head, <laughs> oh, I promised I wasn't gonna cry. But I remember in my head, I really wanna tell this story without getting emotional, but when I kissed them goodnight, in my head, I was saying goodbye to them because I felt like I was dying, that I was going to die, and that I was never going to see my kids again. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, sorry. Okay. So, I laid down in bed, and I started just like distra trying to distract my mind, scrolling through my phone. I did not know what was wrong. I had family and friends calling and texting, Merry Christmas, and all kinds of stuff, and... I didn't want to tell anybody what was going on that was that night so I laid in bed with my ex and I'm just watching I remember that time seemed to have gone by really fast like I lost track of time and it seemed like one minute I was looking at the clock and it was two in the morning the next minute I blinked and it was four in the morning the next minute I blinked and it was six like time just like I lost track of t I lost time I did not know what happened um, and he swore left and right that he did not lace the weed. So the next day I woke up and I felt completely like out of it, but I, I could, I could barely talk because what happened the night before was so traumatizing to me mentally that I had no, I couldn't just, I could not fathom not being in touch with reality and I didn't know it was wrong and I knew something was wrong but I didn't know what it was so um he swore up and down that he didn't and I couldn't even talk he invited me to dinner we were supposed to go to dinner with his family that night and we did 
and the whole time you know I see everybody having fun and I just in my head I was so fucked up from that night that I I honestly thought that I had died the night before and that I was imagining all of this shit happening but I had already died this is how fucked up this whole situation was so we went to his family's house I went back home and then like a couple days later I had to go back to work at the time I was working at a, as a um, nursing assistant and um, I was also helping people enroll in insurance. So I had my own office at the clinic that I worked at and um, I had to see clients. I had to see a bunch of clients and help them apply for insurance. So I remember they would come into the office and everything would be completely distorted. The office would look like the walls were literally caving in on me and it was terrifying. I had to leave every single day early and freaking out, shaking, like just freaking out and I as soon as I would start to feel anxious and that things felt weird around me I felt that same feeling of detachment from my body I would feel it again mind you I never smoked again after that night and I still felt completely detached from my body where any little thing would make me feel like I wasn't real driving I had to drive and look at my hands and my hands did not feel like they were physically attached to my body I knew I was there, I knew what was real, but I, but what I felt, my perception was completely different from what I knew. So I decided to, after panic attack, after panic attack, I was like losing it. And it was affecting my work because, you know, I had to leave early all the time. Um, one of the doctors that I worked for, he um, saw me as a patient. It was just like a family practice, but he said, I think you're having severe anxiety. And I didn't, I didn't, I had never been diagnosed with anxiety. I had no idea. And, um, he, this, he's like, okay, so we're going to try, let's try to put you on paroxetine, which is Paxil. And, um, so I started taking that. I didn't feel any different. I actually felt worse for a while where I was just having constant panic attacks, like bad. So then um, I sought out a psychiatrist and the psychiatrist, what he said to me was that he firmly believed that the person that gave me the weed, my ex, had laced the weed and that I was having, um, you know, I, that he probably thought that it could have been like meth, crystal meth or something along the lines of that type of drug that made me feel the way I felt. I had never felt anything like this and everybody was telling me there's no way weed could just make you feel that way. But for me it did. <laughs> so I was terrified. I never smoked again. Till this day I've never smoked ever again since 2009. Uh, hold on, let me adjust this real quick. Okay. So, um, so that was the beginning of a bunch of trial and error, seeing psychiatrists and being put on different medications. The first one he put me on was Xanax and I felt like an absolute zombie on it. And I was having still horrible panic attacks all the time on Xanax and really numb, really just completely out of it. So I could not handle Xanax. The next one he put me on, he put me on Seroquel and that was a living nightmare. I would literally see clouds after I would take it. So I couldn't, I couldn't take it for more than like three days. Sorry you guys, it's getting cloudy. So my lighting is like, okay. And then the next one he put me on was Clonopin. Clonopin did help me and um, I was on Clonopin for a couple of years um in spite of all the symptoms it helped me kind of get my life back um back on track but it wasn't just the clonopin that helped me it was a bunch of other things that i had to do alongside the medication to help me so it definitely helped as far as like the panic attacks they definitely slowed down after a while but it did take a while on the medicine for it to kick in 
Now, I'm not advocating for medication. Oh my God, my lighting. Sorry, you guys. Okay, so I'm not here advocating for medication. I am just giving you my story, my experiences, and what helps me. And the things that I'm going to mention to you guys, I am not affiliated with their companies and I am not like being sponsored by anything. These are just the things that have helped me throughout the years to cope with my severe anxiety and depersonalization symptoms. Um, so he did explain to me what depersonalization was. It's basically a feeling um, that you get where you feel like you are observing your body as an outsider and or like you are your surroundings are not real which is what they call derealization and I have both um, so I have depersonalization where I feel like my body's not real that's what happens to me when I'm in an extreme anxious state um, it will feel I'll still feel the exact same symptoms that I felt the night that I smoked the weed and um, the other thing, um, other people experience it as derealization, where their surroundings don't assume, don't feel real. So sometimes I'll be driving, and out of the blue, I'll start kind of panicking because the things are. It'll feel like I'm in a dream, and I'll start to question myself: Is this really happening, or am I dreaming? It's terrifying. One of the most terrifying things is questioning reality which is something that people with anxiety deal with a lot. Not all of us get anxiety the same way, but for those of us that do, questioning reality is, it's a mind fuck, basically. And you can have control over a lot of things in your life, but your mind is something that is so, 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 so hard to control. And, you know, trial and error, years for years, I was seeing therapist and psychiatrist and a lot of people didn't know in my life why I was the way I was and why I couldn't work or why I couldn't keep a regular job, why I couldn't work full time, why I couldn't continue to work in the medical field, why I did XYZ and it was because of my anxiety that was so 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 bad that I would have to constantly leave with panic attacks and it, it was just, it was a nightmare. So let me fix this. Okay. So I had to learn after years of trial and error, how to cope with anxiety because I did not want to have to be on benzodiazepines for the rest of my life. And sometimes I feel like I still need them from time to time. And that's okay if you do. But to me, it was my crutch basically like I wasn't addicted to the medication I never became addicted to any of it even though it is highly addicting the thing with me was that I had to have it in my purse if I didn't have it in my purse I didn't feel safe because I knew that the medication was my safety net so like I wasn't addicted I only took it once a day and I was on a very low dose I was like on I want to say I was like on 5.5.5 0.50 milligrams. Um, I was on a very low dose of clonopin and um, and I also tried uh, lorazepam which also helped me after a while but eventually I made the decision that I wanted to come off of everything completely. So I did and throughout the cup the past I want to say past four years or so I have found ways to cope. And one of the things that have helped, that has helped me the most over anything has been learning how to deep breathe. And it sounds so cliche because that's what, that's the bullshit they always throw at you is deep breathing. And I never believed in it. But after I started practicing, what I started practicing was called box breathing. It is a method where you inhale for four seconds, you hold it for four seconds. You exhale for four seconds and you release it for and you hold that for four seconds and 
there's actually a video that really helped me tremendously and it still does. The trick with deep breathing is some, is that you have to do it consistently and you have to do it every day even when you're not feeling anxious or if you're not feeling a panic attack, still do it, train your body to do it. it you have to just make it automatic. So that is your will be your go-to coping mechanism when you do feel anxious. If you don't train yourself to do it, like if you don't train yourself to do it when you're not anxious, then it becomes a lot harder to do it when you are anxious, if that makes sense. Because when you're anxious, you can't focus. So the last thing you want to focus on is your breathing. But it, and it, it's so, so hard to focus on your breathing when you think you're dying, you know. So train your body to do it even when you are not feeling anxious. And it will. it is a total game changer. But you really have to put your intention into this because for years I struggled with deep breathing and this has been one of the number one things that has helped me the most. The second thing that has helped me has been learning grounding techniques, uh, especially for my depersonalization, not just anxiety, but grounding techniques for me, the ones that have helped me the most is, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of it, but one of my therapists a couple years back taught me about the five senses technique. And basically what you do is when you are feeling anxious, for me that would happen a lot when I was driving, and it would also happen a lot when I would go into like a Walmart or a store where I would feel really freaked out. So the five senses technique is basically you look around and look at five things you can see, name them in your head, describe it, describe the color, like, okay, the blue shelves, the red door, the white curtains, and they're soft and they're wide. Okay, so you describe those five things in your head. Then four things you can touch. So you grab the first four things in your vision field. Grab whatever four things and you start feeling it in your hands. Like, okay, so this candle, you know, it's hard and it smells good. Like you just, you just physically try to touch four things and kind of describe what you're touching. Three things you can smell. If you're in a candle aisle or where at, whatever, wherever you're at. Five, three things you can smell. Smell a candle, spray a perfume. Um, I've even smelled like freaking gum before. Open a piece of gum and smell it. Like anything that is around you. And then two things you can, wait, it's five things you can see, four things you can touch, three things you can hear. Yeah, that's what it is. Three things you can hear. So then you start, you just stay quiet and try to become present in the moment. And you will hear, like right now I hear the air conditioning and I hear the cars passing by and I hear my son playing his Xbox. So just stay present. Try to stay present in the present moment. And, and then two things you can smell. So you, again, you can smell a perfume or whatever you have around you that you can smell. One thing you can taste. So whether that's a piece of gum or a piece of candy or a piece of chocolate, whatever you can find that you can eat or just taste, do it. Do this five senses grounding technique as many times as you need until it brings you from here to here. Until you feel your anxiety go from here to here. While you're doing that, focus on your breathing and deep breathe. And it really, really, really makes a difference in lowering your anxiety levels and it's not something that will work if you only do it sporadically. This is something that works when you're constantly making this a habit. And that's the biggest difference is making it a habit. Um, the next thing that has helped me tremendously, um, for those of you that have depersonalization or have experienced that, um, I came across this program back in 2009 when I was going through the, the depths of it. Um, called the DP manual. It's the depersonalization manual and it is they have a website called the DP manual.com. I will link it down below. Um, but this is the manual that absolutely it, I'm not going to say I'm recovered because I still get those feelings, but it helped me cope so much. After so many years of doing this, all of his tips and techniques, after so many years of implementing what he was saying, when I get those feelings now, I don't freak out as much anymore because I know exactly what it is and I know how to come out of it. 
So that is the difference. The difference from 2009 when I didn't know what it was, I didn't know what was happening and I didn't know how to come out of it. And now it's not that I recovered, it's that I know what it is. It no longer scares me because I know the things I need to do to come out of it. The number one thing when you're feeling depersonalized or you're feeling like your reality around you is not real or you don't feel physically connected to your body is to cut caffeine. And I'm saying this right now, but I drink caffeine like a, yeah. So that's my biggest issue. My anxiety would still be a lot better if I fully cut caffeine, but that is his number one tip is to cut caffeine. And there's a whole other bunch of really, really good tips in this manual um, on this website that completely helped me in my journey. And I know it could help you anytime somebody emails me because I get a lot of emails about this. Um, somehow somebody spread the rumor on, on one of the forums that I was a girl who recovered from DP. I'm not the girl that recovered. I just really, really, really learned how to live with it in a way that I don't freak out when I get those symptoms anymore and they pass and they always pass. And just you have to remind yourself that those feelings are temporary and that those feelings will pass because those feelings are terrifying when you don't feel connected to your body and you feel like you're not physically real and you feel like reality has changed. Reality has not changed. It's your perception of it. So the DP manual was absolutely a very important thing that changed my levels of anxiety, deep breathing, grounding. Um, when I feel completely depersonalized, I have to cut caffeine. Now I still drink it, I shouldn't, obviously, because people with severe anxiety and panic disorder should not drink caffeine, but you know, it's really hard because I'm a coffee addict. So I try to pick decaf here and there when I can, but my psh, caffeine is the hard one. But it is recommended when you are in a depersonalized or really anxious state to cut caffeine. So um, another thing that has helped me tremendously is the anxiety and phobia workbook. Um, and I will link it down below. I forget the name of the author, but I will link it down below. I had gotten it a few months ago, actually. And it had it repeated a lot of the techniques that I typically use. Um, but it also has something called, um, if it's not, it's kind of like you challenge your, it's cognitive behavioral therapy techniques, which is the only type of therapy that helps me, um, because it challenges your anxious thoughts and it challenges negative thinking and you kind of have to like, it's like mental rehearsal where you're challenging your thoughts, you're, you know, you're what's your worst case scenario and just talking differently to yourself about situations that make you anxious can change so much for you. So um, the anxiety and phobia workbook has a lot of exercises that will help you challenge these thoughts, your thoughts that make you anxious. And for everybody, it's different. There's things that make you anxious that might not make me anxious and vice versa. So it is such a good book. And it re it gives so many good tips on coping with anxiety naturally. And I'm not talking about like herbs and supplements. I am talking about techniques to work and cope with them. And it has been life changing for me. Another thing that helps me a lot is I use essential oils and I never thought I would be that person that was always using oils and aromatherapy, but this little thing has been life changing for me. So this is an essential, and I always heard people talking about this stuff and I never believed it. But this is an essential oil diffuser. Basically in here, you just put water and you could put about eight drops of your favorite essential oil. Um, you turn it on and it has little lights and the little steam comes on and I got this on Amazon and I'll link this one down below for you guys. It was like probably 11 or 12 bucks, super cheap. And I got this pure aroma, aromatherapy oils. The ones that I use the most that have been proven that are beneficial to anxiety is um, lavender. And I also use peppermint from time to time. Um, but lavender has been the one that calms me down 
so basically what I do, this is like my little routine when I'm really anxious that day, is I come home and I put this right next to my bed. And I put my little lavender oil in it. And um, I'll do my rounds of deep breathing. So there's a YouTube video that I watched, and I'll link it for you guys, where she explains, she goes through the box breathing exercises. And um, so I do that and I do my rounds of box breathing and grounding while I'm breathing. So I do about two to three rounds of box breathing and usually after two to three rounds, my anxiety is completely down and I'm okay. So it has been so helpful. Um, so I use three of these already. Those are the ones I use the most, but these are um, just other scents that, you know, they have orange, lemongrass, just all kinds that you can use, um, the ones that you like, but lavender is very helpful for anxiety. Candles is another thing I'm obsessed. As you can tell, I'm always burning a candle. Just a good smell in your room just brings me that level of like calm. I just need to be in a very calm environment all the time. I cannot deal with drama, fighting, toxicity, stress, because any any of that skyrockets my anxiety. So I always try to keep, you know, my environment very calm and positive and just as calm as possible. Um, so yeah, those are just a few of the things that help me cope. But if I had to give you the most important things that help me would definitely be the box breathing. Box breathing and grounding techniques have absolutely changed the game for me when it comes to my mental health. Um, I never knew the importance of breathing. And I've, I've always struggled with meditation. I do practice meditation when I can, but I've never been one that can focus. I can't focus on meditating. So what I focus on is my breathing and my breathing has changed everything for me. I was the type that got panic attacks and up until a few months ago, I was getting severe panic attacks when I moved to my, to this new place, I had to drive in the country and the roads are very small and there's a lot of trucks and trucks give me a lot of anxiety. I remember driving down a little road and I was like <gasps> hyperventilating because that's that's how bad I get my anxiety where I start to hyperventilate. My first symptom is I get lightheaded to the point where I feel like I'm going to pass out. That's when I know I'm anxious is when I'm driving and I feel so lightheaded that I feel like I'm going to black out. I have to start deep breathing. So now what I do is I put my um, my deep breathing on the, in the car and I'll start deep breathing while I'm driving and I'm looking around. Sometimes if it's really bad, I'll pull over because you know I'm not trying to be a danger to anybody on the road with while I'm hyperventilating and shit. But these things, practicing deep breathing every day, even when I'm not anxious, has been life changing. For those of you with depersonalization, cutting caffeine has been very, very helpful. And I know it's hard because I still drink it, but when I feel depersonalized, that's when I know I have to stop for a while. And it always passes. Just remind yourself that all of these feelings are just temporary and become a observer of your feelings and your sensations. Instead of fighting it, become a quiet observer of it if that makes sense and it will pass and I promise you it will pass if you put in the work it will pass and things can get better for you because anxiety is a beast it is a beast and it is crippling I have been to hell and back with anxiety I've seen the depths of the worst of it and I have pulled myself out multiple times and if I can do it, you can do it. So I am so sorry that this video is like 20 hours long, but I hope that this reaches people who really need it. And I know this is not my typical fashion videos, but this is something I struggle with so, so, so much. And I know that these tips will help because I live them every single day. And my heart goes out to you. If you have crippling anxiety, just know that you are not alone and we can get through it together. Um, just if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below or reach out to me on my Instagram or social media and I'll be more than happy to help in any way that I can um, because nobody should have to feel alone in mental health struggles. So. 
Thank you all so much for watching. And if you did like this video, make sure to hit a thumbs up. And thank you so much for watching.